Okay, so guys, in the first two sessions, what I tried to do was to give you as many VAT basics as possible to answer a question. All right? So some of the basics were VAT input, some of the basics were VAT output. Make sense? Okay. So <clears throat> what I want to do is just go through, just go over those basics right through questions. So I've got four activities that I want to try and do as much as quickly as possible. Right? And for the concepts that we haven't done, then I'm now just going to address through those questions. Does that make sense? Okay. So there's certain basic concepts I haven't done. And then after lunch, we'll do the more complex com uh, issues. All right. And then we'll do more questions after lunch as well. So on the 1st of March, we have looked at this scenario before. All right. And we have looked at point number one there. So point number one dealt with the vet vendor, right? Making a sale to another vet vendor. So therefore we said what? Normal rules apply. So I assume this to be prior knowledge. You guys understand that if you buy, you claim input VAT. If you sell, you levy output VAT, right? So in this scenario here, we purchased a second-hand bucky but we know that normal rules apply so therefore we're going to what purchase input that everyone comfortable with that all amounts include that so therefore 61 5 60 times 14 over 114 and that will be your that input on that transaction comfortable all right second transaction in April 2015, they purchased two boxes of Easter eggs for 285. Input or output VAT? Input VAT, 285. All right. And we are told that the Easter eggs were distributed to customers as prom promotional gestures over the Easter period. Okay. So we bought Easter eggs. Why did we buy the Easter eggs? Promotional purposes. So if it's for promotion, what are we doing? Providing them with what? Food. So therefore, that is entertainment. Are you guys comfortable with that? All right. Is the company in the business of entertainment or not? Not in the business of entertainment. Can we claim that? That is denied. Do you understand the logic? Okay. So therefore, in this case, VAT is denied. All right, let me flip things a bit. All right, so let us say these are guys in garden services, right? So these guys purchase 10 fox or 10, what can be? considered rakes right so they buy ten, 10 rakes they use them for the garden services everyone comfortable can you claim that on the rakes yes or no yes is everyone comfortable now let's say for promotional purposes we give away two rakes will you still be able to claim input that on the two rakes Why did you buy the rakes? To give them to your clients? Or did you buy them for your business? All right. So you bought them to give them to your clients. So can I claim that or can I not claim that? All right, let me go back to the Easter eggs. Why could we not claim VAT? Because it's entertainment, it's VAT denied. So let's go back to the rakes. Are rakes entertainment? Okay, not entertainment, right? So why are you denying them the VAT? Why can't they claim the VAT? So the question then goes back, are you carrying on an enterprise? Yes or no? It's not part of an enterprise giving free stuff away. If you go to spa, sometimes they give you free juice, free stuff. 
tiny things inside there. Is that not carrying on an enterprise? Yes. So therefore the rakes you can claim input that even if you're giving them away. Does that make sense? Okay. So even if you're giving away the rakes, you'll still be able to claim the input bat because you're carrying on an enterprise. Does that make sense? So let's say we are giving you a free week. And let's say this was a taxable supply. All right? We give you a free week. Does that make sense? It is part of our business as we're carrying on an enterprise to promote our stuff. So therefore, any expenditure that we incur for on that free week or during that free week, we still will be able to claim input VAT. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's look at the Easter eggs when we distribute them. Is that a deemed supply? Have we sold those Easter eggs? Yes or no? Right? The fact that we could not claim any VAT, therefore we cannot charge any VAT. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you can't claim VAT, you cannot charge VAT. All right, let me go back to our rake scenario. So, remember I took two rakes, I gave them away to clients. When I give them away to clients, is that a deemed sale? Okay, at what value? market value all right so what it means guys is we need to write something about promotional promotional stuff or goods or whatever because there's specific rules around this right and the rule is if you give away something for promotion then your consideration is equal to what? How much do you get for promoting the stuff? Zero. So if your consideration is equal to zero, who remembers or has seen the word consideration before? Right? Do you remember beginning of the session? Right? When I began the session, there's something that I said about consideration. Consideration is always inclusive of what? That. So therefore, if you give away the stuff for zero rand, you have sold it for how much? Zero rand. So therefore, any promotional stuff that you give away, right? Consideration will always be zero if you are carrying on an enterprise. Does that make sense? So therefore, output VAT will equal to what? Output VAT will equal to zero times, sorry, times 14 over 114, and that will equal to, does that make sense? Okay. All right, so looking at this one here, why did we buy it? For promotion, but what were we doing? Entertainment, so therefore, we're going to go with that denied. But in a scenario where you are carrying on an enterprise, Then in that case, it's going to be 0 times 14 over 114. Is it confusing? Okay. <clears throat> You'll get there. You need to know that certain things are zero rated, certain things are exempt, and certain things are standard rated. Okay. For the stuff that is zero rated, VAT denied, or exempt, Technically, you're not carrying on an enterprise. Does that make sense? So if you're not carrying on an enterprise, it's denied. If you're not carrying on an enterprise, it's exempt. <coughs> A 
All right, let's look at the next question. A customer whose automatic gates have been damaged, right, refused to settle his account. So this is a debtor, right? Refused to settle the account. We said, okay, let bygones be bygone. Therefore, we've done what? Written off the debt. Is this a bad debt? Yes. So if you're dealing with a bad debt, all right, I need you to think along these lines, guys. If you're dealing with a bad debt, you need to look at the underlying transaction. Was the underlying transaction battable, empt, zero rated? Was this a vatable transaction? Yes, it was a vatable transaction. We say debit. So when we write off the debt, we're therefore going to say debit expense, not sales. Right? Credit uh, debit input VAT and credit the data. Is everyone comfortable with that? So therefore, in this case, we're going to have a VAT what? Input as we reverse the debt. Okay, so debit, expense, debit, input VAT, credit, data. Guys, are you understanding this? Okay, next transaction. Garden Solution per, uh, purchased for cash a second-hand computer. Is everyone comfortable this was a second-hand computer? Purchased from a non-vendor. So therefore, your second-hand rules apply. Timing upon payment, value, H5, law of cost of market value times, 14 over 114. Okay, guys, that was 456 times 14 over 114. Instead of giving its employees cash to cover their transport expenses, they purchased coupons, right? During the two-month period, 4,026. So they gave them coupons for the month. All right. So some general stuff around coupons. So you need to know something about coupons, right? What you need to understand about a coupon is a coupon will not have VAT implications when it's purchased. Does that make sense? So, no VAT implications. On purchase. So when you purchase it, no VAT implications. Right? But the VAT implications arise when you redeem that coupon. Does that make sense? Okay? So when you redeem the coupon, that implications arise. All right. So when I exchange that coupon for the service or the coupon for the goods, then the VAT implications arise. So in this case, I got coupons, no VAT implications. Everyone comfortable? All right. Now we give them to the employees. The employees redeem the coupons for what? What do they redeem the coupons for? Transportation. What type of transportation are they getting? Is it road or rail? It's a road. Okay. So therefore... If you look at transportation, <clears throat> just gonna check where it is. Okay, here we go. Transportation. So, we've got three types of transportation, local road and rail, local air, and international travel. So, we've spoken about international travel earlier, and we said international travel was zero rated. 
So also in that VAT test sheet that we gave you are those transactions, right? Looking at the transportation that is road or rail that is going to be exempt. Does that make sense? Okay, so therefore we are redeeming the coupons for what? An exempt supply, so therefore that is going to be what? Exempt. So, on the 1st of March, they purchased a new electric lawnmower for 2052. All right, what's their business? Gardening services. All right, is this a zero rated transaction? Is this an exempt transaction? Standard rated transaction, can you claim VAT? All right, all amounts are inclusive of VAT, 2052 times 14 over 11. Oh, is everyone comfortable with that? Okay, so that's going to be input fat. When they found out that it was underpowered, they purchased a second lawnmower. Right? When you purchase the second one for 2793, we'll do the same times 14 over 114. That's another input that claim. Guys, comfortable? Okay. I mean, let's look at transaction number three. Transaction number three is the first loan more was traded in. So, what has happened? Did we buy it or did we sell it? Sold it. If you sell something, if you supply goods or services and you're registered as a vendor, what's going to happen? Output VAT will be levied. So, therefore, in this transaction, 1710 times 14 over 114 will be output fat. Is this making sense, guys? Okay. Next transaction. <coughs> so looking at the next transaction, they employed a new uh, gardener to provide services to enable uh, Lens the gardener to call on existing potential clients, they purchased a new motor car. So let's look at the purchase of a new motor car. Input VAT, output VAT. We are purchasing, therefore, input VAT. Everyone comfortable with that? All right. What are we purchasing? Zero rated, exempt, or standard rated goods. It is a motor car. More passenger space than load space. So therefore in that case what happens? That is denied. Are you guys following this? Okay. So <clears throat> you're not following it. Denial of VAT. Is it a motor car? If it's a motor car is defined. No VAT claim. No VAT is charged. Everyone comfortable? Okay. So that denied on that transaction. However, the vehicle, which is a motor car, is given to someone to use. So in this case, something is happening. We have a fringe benefit. So if you're looking at fringe benefits, there are four types of fringe benefits that have a that implication. Fringe benefit number one is if an employee is given an asset. Fringe benefit number two is services provided. Fringe benefit number three is someone that is given the use of a company car. So fringe benefit number three is what we have, right? Okay. So how then do I calculate the value of that fringe benefit? Okay, I think the only thing that I didn't write there was the timing of the fringe benefit. So the timing of the fringe benefit is when it is included in that person's what? Does that make sense? Okay, so therefore you have to go to the 
income tax implications of that fringe benefit. Look at when it goes in, onto their payslip, and that's the timing of the transaction. However, the value of this transaction, all right, so let's look at the value of the transaction. The value of the transaction will be cost excluding VAT. All right? Cost excluding VAT. Multiply that by 0.3% or 0.6%. Then you multiply that by 14 over 114. Then you multiply that by the number of months. Okay, so this portion here is calculating basically the value of fringe benefit. <clears throat> so going back to our question we're told that all amounts are inclusive of that do you remember so therefore we're going to say 71 250 i need to exclude that right times 100 over 114 times either 0.3 percent or 0.4 percent 0.3% if it's a motor vehicle or motor car as defined, and 0.6% if it's not a motor vehicle as defined. Make sense? So, are we dealing with a motor car as defined or not a motor car as defined? Motor car is defined, so 0.3%, guys. A lot of people get this wrong because it's 0,3%. It's 0.3 of a percentage. So, if you're going... 0, 0, what? Is it 0, 0, 0,03? Okay. Because that would be 3%, sorry. Is everyone comfortable with that? Okay, make sure you get that right in your calculations. All right, times 14 over 114 times n represents the number of months that you got that fringe benefit for all right so let's look at how long this person got a fringe benefit for so on the first of april they hired this person and they received the use of a motor car the period here runs from the first of march to the 30th of april so how many months therefore that's going to be one month Guys, does this make sense? Okay, that's how you calculate the fringe benefit. <clears throat> that implication. So therefore, whatever you get, you'll say debit salaries. And you will say credit VAT output. Okay, whatever number that was, that will be your transaction. Right. <clears throat> so this formula here was based on the assumption that the employer is all costs. Okay, there's another formula that you're going to use when the employee bears all the costs. Okay, just need you to remember that. And guys, I've given it to you in your handwritten notes which is that portion there all right and once we pick up a question with it then we're going to use that formula everyone comfortable with activity number one let's move on to activity number two all right we'll do activity number two together Right, XYZ is a vendor registered for that on the invoice basis. Guys, invoice basis earlier of payment or invoice. All right, its income is from distribution and selling liquor. The company rents several warehouses. 
right? It also receives income from residential accommodation. So what's happening here is we've got one company that has got standard rated transactions and exempt transactions. Everyone comfortable with that? Okay. <clears throat> so, we then told that exempt transactions are 20%. Okay. So I will write 20% somewhere there. Okay. Now move on to question 3 because question 3 does not have that split. Activity number 3. Look at activity number 3. So what this means, guys, is either you'll get a question where there's the split or you'll get a question without a split. If you get a question without the split, then you're happy because no funny things, right? If you get with the split, then there's certain things that you need to do. So looking at the one without the split, which all students will love, right? It's a registered vet vendor, two-month tax period, right and from the income side of things we told that cash sales of goods is equal to 86,640. so that's cash sales you may assume that all amounts include that at the bottom of the paper of the page you may assume that all amounts are inclusive of that so which fraction are we going to use? 14% or 14 over 114? 14 over 114. So I'll have output VAT on one side and then I'll have input VAT on the other side. So let's look at output VAT first, which is from the sales. Right, from a sales perspective, sales... 86, 640 times 14 over 114. Do you guys agree with me? Okay. <clears throat> so let's move on to the next point. Cash sales. Everyone was happy with it. Credit sales. Times 14 over 114 or not? Times 14 over 114 or not? 129, 960 times 14 over 11. Are you guys comfortable? Okay. Next question. Next point. Payment received in advance for 14,260. Yes or no? So, what basis are we using? Invoice basis. Invoice basis says earlier of payment or invoice. Which one came first? Payment, everyone comfortable? Okay, I could see a few of you guessing what's happening. 14 to 60, guys, be confident in what you know earlier of invoice or payment. Let me put a third one there. It's not there. We receive de debtors to the value of 200,000. We receive debtors to the value of 200,000. Yes or no? Go back, guys. When do we include it? Earlier of what? Invoice or payment? Which one came first? Invoice for your debtors. So you've already included it. Should you include it again? No. Okay. So for your debtors, nothing. When you collect your debtors, no VAT implications. Cool. <coughs> Indemnity payment. So, indemnity payment received from an insurance company in respect of stolen trading stock. 
Indemnity payment is what? Insurance. All right. So you go to your insurance. Short term or long term? Short term. Everyone comfortable? Vatable or not vatable? Vatable. Everyone comfortable? Did we receive cash or did we not receive cash? Anytime they tell you it's an indemnity payment, you have received what? Cash. So therefore, it's a deemed sale. Is everyone comfortable with that? So if it's a deemed sale, therefore, you multiply that by 14 over 114. And that will be your output VAT on that transaction. Guys, are you comfortable with this? You're making sense, okay? Interest received from a loan. Interest is what? Financial services and financial services are what? Exempt, don't say zero rated. Okay. So financial services, interest, exempt, nothing. Salaries and wages. Who remembers what happens? What happens from a salaries and wages perspective? Zero rated, exempt, not carrying on, and enterprise. Correct. Salaries, not carrying on, enterprise. So therefore, nothing. Bank charges. Are these financial services? Not financial service. Services, sorry. Okay. So therefore, input VAT can be claimed 485 times 14 over 114. Issuing a checkbook. Not financial services. Right? The service that the bank offers you, not a financial service. If they give you money, that's a financial service. If they charge you interest, that's a financial service. Does that make sense? Growing up a loan, that's a financial service. Water and electricity. Water and electricity. Zero rated. Exempt. Water and electricity, zero rated, exempt. Standard rated. Okay. Water and electricity. One, two, one, zero times 14 over 114. Okay, guys, for good measure. SARS included into the definition of services, electricity. Okay, so electricity is standard rated. Okay, so in your definition for services, highlight electricity there. Okay, telephone, 795 times 14 over 114. Purchases of trading stock, can we claim? Times 14 over 114. Entertainment of clients. That night. All right. Purchase of new delivery vehicle. A single cab. Delivery vehicle was purchased and financed by way of a higher purchase agreement. What is a higher purchase agreement? Installment credit agreement. Do you remember that? Okay. So don't worry. We go to our leases. An installment Credit agreement includes your finance lease, suspensive lease, 
uh, sale, sorry, and it also includes your higher purchase. Is everyone comfortable? And for those types of transactions, we will claim VAT on day number one. Does that make sense? So therefore, VAT will be claimed on day number one, earlier of delivery or payment. So therefore, on day one, debit asset, debit what? VAT input, can you see that? And credit your liability. Okay, so therefore, that is the VAT on that transaction. So therefore, input VAT, delivery vehicle, Okay, they've already told you the cash price, they've already told you the VAT on the cash price, so you'll use that VAT, which is 7700. Okay, and then the next one is finance charges paid in October for 750. What is that? Financial services so therefore no vat let's look at the next one motor vehicle or motor car as defined <clears throat> it was given as a fringe benefit on the 1st of the 10th 2015 to the managing director cash price hey guys just need to confirm 30th of the 9th, 2015, this is 31st of the what? 10th. So it's in the period of assessment, right? Okay. This one was purchased on the 1st of the 10th, 2015. Can we claim that on a motor vehicle? Yes or no? No. That is what? That denied. Right, on petrol, can we claim that? Zero rated. On maintenance of a motor car, can we claim that? On the maintenance of the motor car. Maintenance of the motor car. Remember when I bought the motor car, it was VAT denied. When I maintain it, that denied or not? Okay. Guys, on the maintenance, you can claim that. Where is the VAT denied? On the purchase of a vehicle and on the rental of the vehicle. Those are the only two. Does it include maintenance? No. Does it include insurance? No. So if you insure a motor vehicle, you can claim the VAT. If you maintain a vehicle, you can claim the VAT. All right, and we also told it was given as a fringe benefit from the 1st of the 10th, 2015. So let's look at this fringe benefit. Will the fringe benefit be a output VAT or an input VAT? Everyone comfortable? It's an output VAT. Debit salaries, credit, output VAT. Okay, so therefore you go to your output side of things. Okay, go to the output side of things. All right, you're going to take the cost, excluding what? That, multiply that by point, 3% or point, 6%, multiply that by 14 over 114, multiply that by the number of months. Okay, cost excluding that is 40,000 times 0.3%, which is a motor car is defined. Multiply that by 14 over 114. Multiply that by how many months? One month, and that will be your output VAT. Any questions, guys? Yes. Okay, so that's the cash price. 
excluding that. So they broke down the invoice for you, the value of the vehicle, VAT on the vehicle, petrol on the vehicle, and maintenance on the vehicle. Okay, cash price equals to what we call value, and value is consideration less VAT. All right, guys, that's session one, basics of VAT. Any thoughts? Confused? Lost? All good? All right, so guys, let's take a 45-minute lunch break. Then when we come back, we're doing advanced VAT. Cool. See you in 45 minutes' time, guys.